Hello, in this video I would like to give a helicopter view of business valuation methods. First thing we have to ask ourselves is which business value do we actually want to calculate or do we want to assess? Then which method will we apply to do this? How will we do this more specifically? How will we apply these methods? Then a little bit extra information about the appropriate discount rate and I will end this with an end note. So first thing we have to ask ourselves is which business value do we want to calculate? This is the balance sheet of a company and of course a company has operating assets such as property plan and equipment they have working capital requirements, operational cash, this means the cash they will use in their everyday activities, but companies might also have non-operational assets such as excess cash or an art collection. Well, if you are talking about an art collection as a non-operational asset, well, in that case, this is not the balance sheet of an art dealer, for example. For an art dealer, art will be an operating asset. Of course, a company is also financed, is funded. There will be equity funding provided by the equity holders and there will be financial debt or other types of long-term financing. So which values do we have? If we start from the operating assets, then the first value we have is the enterprise value, the value of all the activities of the company. Starting from this enterprise value, we could add the non-operational assets. And when we do that, we get the firm value, the value of both operating assets and non-operational assets. But then again, the company is funded with equity and financial debt. If we want to know the value for the equity holders, which will very often be the the main goal of business valuation, that will mostly be the value you want to know. Well, to get to know this value, you start from the firm value and you deduct the financial debt or other long-term debt financing. And so you get the equity value. There are many methods you can use to calculate different types of values. So the method you will use will also depend on the value you want to calculate. The most sophisticated method would be the discounted cash flow method. In this method you will use the free cash flows and so the free cash flows is really an indication of the operations of a company so this method would result in an enterprise value. Starting from the enterprise value, when we add the non-operating assets to the enterprise value, we end up with the firm value. If then again we deduct the financial debt or the long-term financial debt, then we get the equity value. So with the discounted cash flow method, in the end, you are able to assess all different types of values. There are also easier ways, more direct ways to calculate values. For example, for the enterprise value, we could also use operational ratios, such as the enterprise value over EBIT or the enterprise value over sales can also use ratios to directly calculate the firm value, such as the firm value over total assets ratio. But again, there also exist ratios which would result, directly result in an equity value. 
such as the price earnings or the price to book ratio. Another way to directly calculate equity would be the dividend discount model, in which we will use, as the name says, dividends. So how do these methods work? Just a simple overview of the methods. Uh, we will not go too deep in it. For example, the discounted cash flow method is just a two-step process. You calculate the free cash flows and then you will discount these cash flows using the formulas. So to get the enterprise value, you will discount the free cash flows. If you think the free cash flows will be very stable or you only have information for the next free cash flow, then you can use the shortcut, which we will use only one free cash flow and divide it by the weighted average cost of capital minus the growth rate. To calculate values using multiples, the first thing we have to do is to search relevant values for these multiples. Very often you will use industrial level ratios. You will take an average of many companies in a specific industry and use this to value your company of interest. So for example, you will get the industry enterprise value over EBIT ratio. And then you multiply the enterprise value of the company is equal to the industry ratio, the industry enterprise value over EBIT, multiplied with the EBIT of the company. So a very direct way to calculate enterprise value. Dividend discount models, such as the Gordon Shapiro model, well, here we will use dividends. So you just look up the dividends or you somehow try to get an idea about the dividends in the future and then you apply again this simple formula equity value at time zero is the next dividend divided by the cost of equity minus the growth rate i did not put too much emphasis on it yet but very important here is that you use the appropriate discount rate for example, enterprise value models will use um, a proxy for the activities of the company, um, but activities independent of its financing structure, such as the free cash flow. Well, in that case, you will have to take into account all these financing means so not only equity but also debt and so on and we will do that by using the weighted average cost of capital on the other hand if we directly want to calculate the equity value of the company and we use an equity value model then we will use the cost of equity closely related to that is my end note do not compare apples and oranges. So if you use a dividend discount model, you use dividends. Dividends are for the equity holders. They receive the dividends. So what can we calculate with that? Equity values. But if we directly calculate the equity value, by discounting dividends, well, in that case, we have to take into account the cost of equity. On the other hand, if we use a discounted cash flow method, then we have a proxy for the operations of the company, the free cash flows. Well, this will result in an enterprise value, but as we use a proxy for all the activities in a company, independent of how the company is financed, 
Well, in that case, we will take into account the financing structure by using the weighted average cost of capital. Also, be careful with which elements you use. If you use the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, well, this is an operational measure. So if you use the EBIT to, 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 to assess the value of a company, well, in that case, you should use it to calculate the enterprise value the value of the activities of the company. So very important to not compare apples and oranges. Always think very carefully that everything, every element is in accordance with each other. Final thing I would like to add with respect to valuations. Sometimes you will have to make a cost benefit analysis. Some of these methods will require much more time, much more effort to apply, such as a discounted cash flow method, which is not an easy, straightforward method to apply. So if you are in a bar, for example, at Friday on Friday evening, and you are discussing business values with your friends, well, in that case, you probably don't want to start with the DCF model. In that case, you can just rely on multiples. If, however, you have to write a very detailed report about the value of a company, well, then you will have to use more sophisticated methods. And then the discounted cash flow method will probably be your first choice. Thank you for watching and see you later.